Who is, who is it that gives Elisette Iniguez to be married to Ryan Hausman? Friends and family, welcome to the wedding of Ryan Hausman and Elisette Iniguez. <laughs> and for them, let me say thank you for joining them on this special occasion. Let me encourage you not to simply observe, but to participate in this ceremony as real witnesses, allowing what is said and done here to encourage you in your relationships as well. Let us pray. Father God, we just thank you for Ryan and Lizette that you have brought them together, God, that you have uh, let them just see how important you are in their, their lives and how they want to join in marriage with uh, you as that holy triangle, Lord. We ask that you bless this ceremony. We ask that you bless them and their journey and everybody here, Lord. We ask that your presence is here with us and among us. And we say all these things in your son Jesus Christ's name. Amen. We have come here together in the sight of God and in the presence of these people to join together this man and this woman in the union of marriage, which is an honorable state of life, instituted from the beginning by God himself, signifying to us the importance of marriage as a vital component of life. Today we stand here recognizing that God has drawn you both to this moment in your life. Having recognized your need for him in your life and your reliance on his goodness, has allowed you to discover the joy set before you in marriage. Our Heavenly Father is a God of love. In this love, God's greatest response to us is His grace and mercy. It is because of His grace that He will never give up on us and always desire for us to live the best lives possible. And at the same time, God is holy and righteous, meaning in the relationship we have with Him, He demands that we honor Him in all we do meaning we should never give up on what he wants to do in us and through us. God uses the example of love through marriage to help us understand the kind of relationship he wants to have with us, a relationship very intimate and very personal. Marriage, therefore, should never be entered into thoughtlessly, lightly, or merely to satisfy physical desires, but prayerfully, with careful thought, mutual submission, and with reverence for God properly considering the purposes for which it was instituted. Submission to one another is what God desires for us in marriage. Submission is a very strong word and often misunderstood. The Greek translation for submission means to get under and lift one up. Mutual submission means that one does not expect the other to catch, to cater to their needs. You both are to look out for and seek to meet each other's needs. Submission does not mean being weak either. After all, look at Jesus. He was the teacher, the leader of the disciples, not to mention the Messiah. Yet, he got down on his knees and he washed their feet. See, when we are submissive to God, the fight is over. We trust God to meet our needs. In a marriage, when we submit to each other, the fight is over. We trust to meet each other and we trust each other to meet our needs. You no longer have to prove anything when you submit to each other in the commitment of marriage. The Apostle Paul says it very clear. God desires for us in marriage is to live by the code of respect and mutual submission. Marriage was instituted because in the very beginning, God saw that it was good for man, for man not to be alone. Marriage was instituted for the mutual companionship, help, comfort, and submission, which everyone ought to have for another, both in prosperity and adversity. Today we celebrate a great gift with you, Ryan and Elisette, the gift of God's love and marriage that is expressed through your commitment and submission and love for each other. I know that your desire is not only to receive this gift from God, but to have him as an active participant in the expression of this gift through your lifetime. Marriage isn't based on the simple fact that we need to help, that we needed help in this life, but that in each of us we have a need to share love with one another submitting to each other. The very love that motivated God to create us in the first place dwells within us. The Bible goes into great detail on the specifics of submission, telling us that it's intended to be the foundation of marriage. The only way that this happens is when Christ is involved. Here's how the beauty of mutual submission is expressed through Ephesians 5, 
21 through 33. Submit to one another out of reverence for Christ. Wives, submit yourselves to your own husbands as you do the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife, as Christ is the head of the church, his body of which he is the Savior. Now as the church submits to Christ, so also wives should submit to their husbands in everything. Husbands, love your wives, just as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her to make her holy, cleansing her by the washing with water through the word, and to present her to himself as a radiant church without stain or wrinkle or any other blemish, but holy and blameless. In the same way, husbands ought to love their wives as their own bodies. He who loves, he who loves his wife loves himself. After all, no one ever hated their own body, but they feed and care for their body, just as Christ does the church. For we are members of his body. For this reason, a man will leave his father and mother and be united to his wife, and the two will become one flesh. This is profound mystery, but I'm talking about Christ and the church. However, each one of you must also love his wife as he loves himself, and the wife must respect her husband. Now Ryan and Lizette, a love like this must be acted upon. Do you, Ryan, take your Lizette to be your wife according to God's holy ordinance, to have and to hold from this day forward, for better or for worse, for richer or poorer, in sickness and in health, to love and to cherish until you are parted by death. And to do this, do you pledge your word? If so, please respond, I do. I do. Do you, do you, Lizette, take Ryan to be your husband, according to God's holy ordinance, to have and to hold from this day forward, for better or for worse, for richer or for poorer, in sickness and in health, to love and to cherish until you are parted by death. And to this you pledge your word. If so, please respond, I do. I do. The Bible reads that marriage happens when a man shall leave his father and mother and be united to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. This is what we would call the biblical definition of marriage. It is founded in the book of Genesis, Jesus affirms it in the Gospels, and we also find it in the early writings of the church. As we understand this definition, there are three words that frame our definition. To leave, to unite, and oneness. To leave is to embark on a journey. You are about to begin a journey of discovery, where you will not only discover the joys of marriage, but the challenges as well. As we talked about, marriage is more about understanding the difference and embracing them. God made you very different, and he knew exactly what he was doing. When you accept this, you will discover the new strengths from each other as you journey together. To unite is to make a commitment. Today, you both are committing to live the rest of your lives together. When those moments are the most challenging, it is the commitment that you are making to God that will carry you through. When you commit to live for God, then you understand the commitment it takes to live life as a married couple. His promise is that when you apply his truth to your life, it will guide you along this journey into amazing discoveries that will continue to grow to your continue to grow your love. To become one is the ultimate expression of true love. It's when two people physically join their lives together for God's glory. Oneness is sharing everything with the other person. From this point forward, every decision, every choice, and every moment will be lived no longer as two separate people, but as one in new creation with God. When you understand this definition of marriage and commitment to live it out in your lives, then the two of you will experience the great promise of God that marriage is the best reality that one can experience in life. Nine years ago, God revealed his greatest gift to me. When we met, I was completely unaware of how he would impact my life. Beginning at the intersection of M48, <laughs> the day that we privately declared our love for each other until today as we publicly pronounce our love in front of family and friends what a journey it has been I, will look, I always look forward to reaching this day with you but I never expected to have established 
this unbreakable bond with you in the process. The love I've acquired for you has inspired the dedication, has been inspired by the dedication you have to our relationship, which motivates me every day. For nine years, you have displayed strength and support in our relationship, through the good times and the bad, which continues to inspire my unwavering love for you. While life has tested our relationship with a variety of challenges, we have supported each other through it all. I know the support and strength that we have developed will be all that is needed to get us through any future difficulties life will throw at us. When we're apart, I feel incomplete. From camping in Monterey, gambling in Reno, and trips to Disneyland is just hanging out at home. Anything I do needs to be with you because anything I do without you constantly reminds me of you. There's an absence of life, an absence of energy without you. Not to mention, things get unusually quiet. <laughs> I'm honored to have you by my side to face life together. I'm excited about our future because of the passion we have for each other. With God at our side and leading the way, I look forward to our future and what he has in store for us. I promise I will continue to be patient. I vow to have never ending love for you. I swear I will protect you and be strong for you. I will dedicate myself to you for the rest of our life, for the rest of our days on earth, and into eternity in heaven. just by your good looks or your cute blues, but it was your mere presence. Um, okay. Um, there was something about having you just sit next to me in English class that made it feel like, you know what, today's going to be a good day. Um, I even assigned a ringtone to your phone, um, and every time I would hear this ringtone, <laughs> um, I would run to my phone like it was about to detonate. If I didn't answer it in time, I would get so excited just because you were calling. Um, I was already in love with you, I just didn't know it. That infatuation turned into a friendship, thus creating the Fab Four, which we are standing amongst. Two of them members here on stage. Um, but we had our own little thing going on, even within that, friendship, that group of friendships. You even gave me my own nickname, and I gave you the same nickname. And I can't say it up here, it's a funny word though. Um, it's just not appropriate. <laughs> But um, I remember you even getting kind of mad when Chris and Liana stole that nickname from us and started using it with us as well, because you wanted that to just be a me and you thing. <laughs> I'm not even reading off this thing anymore. Where is it at? Um, that friendship grew into a deeper love that I have ever known or ever will know. I can't promise you that I will always be patient, understanding, or easy to love but I can't promise you that I will never be too proud, that I can't apologize for my wrongdoings. I can't promise you that I won't mess up, because I can only try. Um, but I vow to try. I vow to love you through every flu, every Christmas, every good or bad day. Um, because, <laughs> I do. <laughs> um, because it's not, perfection that makes our relationship great. It's all the little imperfections that each of us has and still being down for each other at the end of the day and so madly in love. You have always been the best part of my every day. I guess you can compare our love to this symbiotic relationship, that of a sunrise, 
When the first great blade of grass gets kissed by the gentle sun, melting off all the morning frost after a long winter's night. Our bond is an amazing gift from God, and you are a beautiful miracle that happened to me. And I will never take advantage of you. Thus, I vow to love you, respect you, be true to you, and most importantly, be humble. Uh, most importantly, to humble myself whenever I find that you have not gotten the very best of me because you deserve the world. I will always feel this way for you because you are the one. You have chosen to seal these vows with the giving and receiving of rings. Made in a circle, they remind you that your love must never come to an end. Being made of precious metal, they too remind us the love is not cheap or common. These rings are traditionally placed on the third finger of the left hand because it is believed that the finger contains the vein of love which leads directly to the heart. Do we have the rings? Okay, sorry. Sorry. <laughs> Ryan, we take your ring and place it upon the third finger of Lizette's hand and repeat this promise after me. As God is my witness, as God is my witness, with this ring, with this ring, I seal my promise. I seal my promise to be your faithful and loving husband. To be your faithful and loving husband. Lizette, yes. your ring. And Lizette, will you take your ring and place it upon the third finger of Ryan's left hand and repeat this promise after me. As God is my witness, as God is my witness, with this ring, with this ring, I seal my promise. I seal my promise. To be your faithful and loving wife. To be your faithful and loving wife. Let me charge you both of you as you hope for happiness in your life married to be true to the vows you have made to each other. Never forget God's love for both of you. A love that allows you to share your love with each other day and day out. And let it always live in your hearts and in your minds. Having heard you make these pledges of affection and having watched you seal your vows with rings, I do, by the authority vested in me, by God and the great state of California, now pronounce you husband and wife. What God has joined together, let no man ever separate. Ryan, you may kiss your bride. <laughs> Family and friends, may I be the first to introduce you to Mr. and Mrs. Ryan Houseman. <laughs> 